Right now at seven, some stunning video coming into our newsroom of what appears to be a tornado right in the heart of Jacksonville. This was right around five o'clock this evening. We're gonna have the latest on this coming up in just a minute. And take a look at this video. Uh, you're about to see video, if we have it, of a water spout that was moving up the St. John's River in Green Cove Springs. This was near the Shands Bridge earlier today. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for staying with us tonight. I'm Heather Crawford. We want to get right to Chief Meteorologist Tim mm -hmm. Deegan with the latest on Elsa's track. Tim has been uh, on air for hours today tracking this storm as it's brought all kinds of weather and, and some damage here to our first coast. Tim, where is this storm right now? All right, thanks, Heather. Yes, unfortunately, we have had some damage, and this is just a tropical storm, folks. But let's start with a little bit of bright news, and that is that Elsa continues on the move and will continue to. Unlike other tropical cyclones that maybe you have experienced, this one is not hanging around. It's weakened significantly over the land areas. So, for instance, those of you in Waycross, yes, the core is going right over you, but don't worry. Uh, if nothing else, even if you don't care about the numbers, follow the colors and look how much less dramatic the colors are here. This is the infrared satellite picture. The more dramatic the colors, the higher the cloud tops, the higher the cloud tops, the colder the cloud tops, and that just means the stronger the storms. Bam, there it is. So we showed you uh, the water spout. We showed you the tornado. I'm not sure if we uh, want to show you that again, uh, but this, so the satellite picture we showed you is looking on top of the storm that produced the water spout is looking on top of the storm that produced there it is the tornado you're looking this is here on phillips highway as the tornado was working toward the north the parent storm is connected to elsa and since we're to the right of elsa everything right now pretty much moving from the south toward the north and that's what the tornado did uh, that tornado warning covered areas from so again there was the color uh, we have the uh, timing of this over the last couple of hours, uh, but again, the, so the water spout was indicated uh, here and then Fruit Cove and then the tornado was actually visible right about there and then also uh, looks like it was uh, quite apparent and possibly has caused some damage in southeastern Camden County and then finally the last tornado warning was over Glen County. All right, so that's the uh, satellite picture. We'll come back to radar in just a moment. Uh, I wanted to take all the noise out just to whew, take a breath. And there it is, uh, Tropical Storm Elsa. But I also want to point out, I talk about this a lot, and I'm not sure if it makes the point. Um, and it's, it's more significant if, uh, when a storm is heading toward us. But remember, the cone shows us where the forecast is and where the <laughs> forecast error is. And I like to show it now because notice where the cone is and notice where the worst of the weather is. All right, sometimes I think uh, we get kind of caught up into thinking, oh, that's where the worst of the weather is. And sometimes it lines up, but it's really meant to just to show you the forecast. And that's why the farther out in time we go, the larger the cone is, because that just means the larger the error is, because we're forecasting farther off into the future. Okay, enough of the future and the past. What about right now? Flood warnings remain in effect until 930. And that's for those of you in Camden, Glen, Brantley, and Pierce counties. But... Any new heavy rain is primarily going to be coastal Camden. And what I mean by that is well out toward the islands and then Glen County. And even in Glen County, by 930, the heaviest of the rains will be over. Tornado watch technically in effect still for du Duval and Nassau until 8. But we really think the only threat of anything new is going to be Glen County. And Glen County, that threat just about out of there. We're showing you just the lightning. There's a lot of rain. But I just wanted to paint where the worst of the storms are. They're racing out of our area and they're racing toward Savannah because everything is feeding in toward Elsa. And there is the core of Elsa. The feeder bands are coming in off of the warm Atlantic, but still going to continue, continue to produce heavy rains over southeastern Georgia. That's why you're still under those flood warnings. Now, the flood warnings, that's not a discussion about the rivers. Rivers in northeast Florida will continue to rise. So the flood warning is simply talking about what's happening on your street in your neighborhood. I'm highlighting some areas that at the very least, even if we don't have any new tornado warnings for those of you in Glen County, I'm highlighting some areas where you're still going to continue with the threat of wind gust over about 50 miles per hour and some heavy rains through about 750, so almost 8 o'clock, and then conditions will be improved. Proving. So we'll stay hyper focused over coastal southeast Georgia, but in a bit we'll expand that picture for the rest of the first coast and beyond Elsa because Elsa is headed out.
All right, thanks so much, Tim. And sadly, this storm has proven deadly here on the first coast. A tree fell on top of two cars today in Ortega. We know at least one person inside was killed. This happened near Roosevelt Boulevard and Yacht Club Road. On your side's Haley Harrison is there with an update on this tragedy. Haley? Heather, you're right. We're here, like you said, off of Roosevelt Boulevard and Yacht Club Road, where as you can see, the scene has partially cleared here, but um, the sheriff's office says a tree branch gave way from the storms around 3.30 and hit two vehicles traveling northbound on Roosevelt. Now it ripped off the roof of a Dodge Challenger, which was just towed from the scene about 10 minutes ago. It instantly killed the driver in his 20s. Investigators say the Toyota Highlander involved, which you can see right there, was driven by a 40 year old who came from the scene uninjured. Now crews will continue blocking off these northbound lanes at least for the next, I don't know, about an hour um, as crews work to remove the cars and the tree that they took down. Now here's um, now Jason also says there are homes south of here that lost power due to this accident. We don't have any more additional information on if that power has been restored or when it will be restored, but we'll be sure to give you the very latest here um, on air and online at firstcoastnews.com. Live in Ortega, I'm Haley Harrison, First Coast News, on your side. Haley, thank you, and we want to continue our team coverage now live with Jocelyn Howard, who's out at McCoy's Creek. I was just talking to Tim Jocelyn, and he told me the water there is still rising. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, exactly. I was listening to Tim and I was watching as he was saying that water is rising and I'm seeing this in front of me. That's exactly what's happening. So let's take a look right here. This barrier, it says erosion control and this eh, I'm not a very tall person, but it's up here to my thighs and um, we're going to I'm going to point all the way back here where you can see the top of some of those pegs. That is where it looks like they're still standing straight up. So that can kind of give you a gauge of how high that water is all the way over there. And that is supposed to be on the edge of McCoy's Creek. Other than that, this all is supposed to be a grassy area. Now this right here is McCoy's Creek Boulevard where I'm standing, and this has been a problem area. This isn't something new, and the city has actually allotted more than $100 billion for a restoration project that is supposed to help this area restore store the creek. It will include some parks and trails and it will get rid of, rid of this road right here. So it definitely will be a big difference, especially for these poor residents who live up on the side over here. This one building that's closest to us. We were talking to the woman who lives here. She had a great attitude about it. She hates, of course, that it comes up here, but she said you came to visit me on my private island. How sweet of you. <laughs> it gave us a good laugh, but it just shows they are very used to this over here and they definitely hope that it can change. But as for the conditions here, just like Tim has said, we are seeing the levels here rise. When we got here about two hours ago, we were over by the road closed signs and it was dry over there and that's where we were parked. So obviously we had to move back here, but we will keep you updated here on the conditions on First Coast News and online at firstcoastnews.com. I'm Jocelyn Howard at McCoy's Creek. First Coast News on your side. All right, Jocelyn, you stay safe out there. Thank you very much. And Elsa definitely leaving her mark on the first coast. New pictures you see right here show some of the destruction. This is in Camden County. These pictures were posted to the First Coast News Weather Watchers Facebook page. Thank you, Jessica, for sharing them with us. Uh, you can see there what looks like an RV flipped over and a tree knocked down. And then I want you to take a look at this video taken in Kings Bay. It shows one RV right there, if you can see it, flipped onto its roof, another on its side, and you can see a third push clear off the cement pad where it had been sitting right into a line of trees. So some significant damage there in Kings Bay. On your sides, Robert Bradfield's reaching out to the man who posted those videos, and he's going to have more in just a few minutes for us. And streets are already starting to collect water as we've been showing you here in Jacksonville. These pictures are from the northwest side of the city. This is along the Rebalt River, an area that is prone to flooding. And we're getting a new look tonight at the rain that came down earlier today in Baker County. Jessica Steiger shared this video with us. We want to thank all of you who are sending in your pictures and your videos. And you hear the rain there. This is in St. Augustine. Uh, this video showing the rain falling pretty hard. This was this morning. Pam Whittle took this video. She says she's on vacation at Ocean Gallery, and this is what she captured.
Now, in Columbia County, the National Weather Service confirms that an EF0 tornado touched down south of Lake City this morning, bringing a tree down on top of a house. A mom and her four children were inside. Fortunately, though, no one was hurt. It looks like literally what you see off of the movie. It was scary. <laughs> Shut the door and went back inside, got all the kids. I took them to the pantry because there was no windows in there. I was my I didn't want the kids to get hurt, so that was my main concern. And a family in Columbia County, a different family, is asking for your help to find their missing dog. She disappeared where that tornado touched down today. This is Honey the Pitbull. She's not been seen since the tornado hit, and her family tells us she's wearing a bright pink collar. You see it right there in this picture. If you've seen Honey the Pitbull, please email us, newstips at firstcoastnews.com, or you can reach out to our Renata De Gregorio, who's on Twitter, at Renata FC News. And we would love to see what's happening in your neighborhood. So if you can do so safely, please share your pictures and your videos of the storm damage of the conditions where you are right now through our app. Just download the First Coast News app. Use the near me function. You'll see that on the bottom right hand corner. If you don't have the app already, no problem. Text the word app APP to 904-633-2402. We'll send a link for you to download it right now. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have more of our storm coverage of Elsa when we come back. Okay. Yeah. So right now we are tracking reports of damage across the first coast after Elsa has made its way through uh, the Jacksonville area. A tornado, we understand, a touchdown earlier on your sides. Kaylee Tracy's live tonight on Jacksonville's south side with an update. Kaylee. Yeah, Heather, I'm at the Pine and Brook Apartments. That is on Powers Avenue, and I have David Rothermill here with me. And he, you were inside your apartment when this all happened. So I'm yeah. just going to have you tell me, what did you witness and what did you hear? Well, it all started when I was watching the news, and Tim, I, Tim was saying there was a tornado watch, and he said it was off of Bay Meadows and uh, uh, Sunbeam. 
And I go, wow, that's kind of close. So we kind of watched it, and they had a little square, that, little thing showing where it could have hit. And then we started hearing some noise, and, and then all of a sudden the wind picked up really fast. And I was looking out this window right there, and then I, all of a sudden I see my chairs pick up and start going to the, to the right. And then, then all of a sudden they went to the left about five seconds later, and then everything started going to the left. And the next thing I knew, the tree came down. I heard a train, which they say you always hear a train. I heard the train. And we're by train tracks, but it felt like the train was like off the tracks next to us. And it was, it was pretty powerful. I've been through earthquakes in California, but this was devastating. I, it ain't like no hurricane. It was a tornado. I, mean, I could see everything going in circles. And it just, it took out, I mean. Can you walk us through over here just a little bit of, I'm going to have a photographer, Emily, come along with us. Sure. Show us your apartment here on the left. My apartment's right here on the bottom. I'll have our photographer come a little bit further up so we can show you the damage here. My apartment's 93 right across from the Little League field. And the first thing I saw was these two white chairs come up off the ground like a hovercraft and take off that way and hit these trees. And a couple of seconds later, they come take it off back this way. Then I saw another bunch of stuff take off that way. And then this tree came down and hit the fascia up here and then hit that roof and ricocheted off this porch. And it almost came down, but that post right there was just barely holding up. And I was like standing there like this. And I go, oh, I gotta move. And all of a sudden the power pole came down. And I'm going to have Emily also just show this power line here. Yeah. JEA is on scene here as well. We passed some crews out working on this utility pole here that did come down, as you just said. Yeah, um, it was like fireworks all over again. I am so glad that you are okay. Is there any anything else that you wanted to add about this? Well, I, I looked at the damage here. They left one of my American flags on the 4th of July, but then I got my truck, the trees. Broke my windshield in my truck, so I got my. I just moved in a month ago, and then I just got a windshield three months ago fixed. Well, I'm so we're glad. Okay, we're all alive. I'm so glad you're okay yeah. tonight, and I'm sorry that you have to go through all this. But thank you for thank sharing you. your story. I appreciate it. We toss things back to I you tell, guys. Tell Tim thank you for uh, uh, giving us a heads up, because I was getting ready to go outside. We went and got the big mama kitty and took her in the house and saved her too. So Aww. she was laying right under there, under the tree, under I'm, the. I'm glad you got there. that alert. Yeah, I'm glad you're you. safe tonight. Appreciate it. All right, back to you guys. Wow, Kaylee, what a story he has. And that's why our weather team stays on air whenever there are tornado warnings. We are so glad that he was listening and that he was able to stay safe. That apartment complex there uh, on Jacksonville South Side, Powers and Old Kings Road is where that damage is. Uh, we want to go now to Jeff Vallon, continuing our live team coverage from St. Augustine tonight. Uh, the skies, Jeff, right now look clear where you are. Is that right? Yeah, it actually does look great. We're at Coquina Park and Davis Shores, an area that's known to flood. Uh, not a problem right now. And in fact, uh, just one more thing, if I can get this. I'm not wearing my rain jacket right now. OK, so let's talk about this again. We lo also looked in Lincolnville. No flooding that we saw over there earlier. Uh, well, before we rolled a video, let's look out at the Intracoastal Waterway uh, and how things are right now. Just a bit of a breeze. Uh, the rain has stopped, at least for now. Uh, but now let's roll video of earlier in the day. It wasn't bad. A uh, little bit of rainfall here in this area and uh, also then uh, downtown. We could see that the, the, there was some bands of rain and uh, the flags were moving on the breeze quite a bit. But there were quite a few people out and enjoying themselves until that rain got heavy. Uh, overall, we know that this storm has been a lot gentler to St. Augustine than it has been to some other places in our viewing area. Live in St. Augustine, Jeff Ballin, First Coast News on your side.